All right, I'm scooting on now past the uh, uh, educational expense list, the cost and the financial assistance and stuff, and moving on to some of the sample forms. So these are forms that you see in our program application area that you can download the forms. So I just kind of thought I'd have them here as well just to kind of show them to you. And this first one is the program interest form, which is the first thing that you send in to me along with your transcripts for academic eligibility. I've got it kind of marked out just so that you don't submit this because I really want you to submit the form that's downloadable. But this just kind of shows you the forms. And I'll go through some of these as well. Some of them I'll want to talk about some more. Here's the keywords form. I haven't done this in strike through so you can use this but really don't use this. Use the the one that you can find that you download that you can kind of fill in and save your computer and then submit to me. So this is the keywords form. Now the clinical site visit. So the clinical site visit, this is a form that you will take with you to the clinic. Actually, you don't have to take this one to, with you to the clinic. You can fill this one out later and then send it to me. But this kind of uh, documents to me that you've done your clinical site visit. So uh, this is a form that kind of gives you some clues about the clinical site visit and it gives you some reminders as well, like four hours for Amarillo, 16 hours for everybody else. And those clinical site visit hours, we want them to be done in consecutive days for 16 hours, so two eight-hour days. It's best if they're done two days in a row. Uh, we really want them to be done at least no more than a week apart. Like if you have a, if oh, Thursdays are your off day, for instance, then you can do a Thursday one week for your, your first eight hours, then Thursday the next week for your other eight hours. So uh, that's kind of how we want to schedule those. So we don't want them too far apart. And honor your appointment day and time, canceled recall or reschedule if necessary. Again, I'll be giving you more direction about this process during your follow-up visit and who to call and you'll you'll know by then anyway by the time you get to this you'll know who to call and who to contact and stuff dress code what to wear to your clinical visit well this is what we say in Amarillo business casual or better or where it should be w-e-a-r not where <laughs> so sorry about that wear full scrubs uh, if you've got them uh, if you don't have them, then business casual or better. So that's like Dockers kind of pants and a, a shirt with a collar and a preferably button-down shirt. Um, uh, so if wearing business casual, do not wear blue jeans, tennis shoes, or t-shirt type shirts. Please avoid perfumes and colognes. Just, just don't wear them because patients can be very sensitive. Especially if they're going through chemotherapy, they can be very sensitive to chemical odors. Uh, female applicants should not should avoid uh, heavy makeup should not avoid heavy makeup duh <laughs> do avoid heavy makeup please uh, uh, ladies wear flats no heels no earrings except for maximum one stud per ear uh, and really no other piercings that are visible at all and no tongue piercings at all nothing that can hinder speech shirts must have a collar and sleeves and dress pants uh, including women no skirts or dresses you're gonna be moving around bending around and on your feet all day you want to be comfortable uh, so that's our basic guidelines. If you have tattoos, it doesn't say this here, but if you have tattoos, cover them up. Uh, and most clinical sites, you might check with this, but most clinical sites mandate or require that if you have any tattoos, they have to be covered while you're in clinic. So I've had some people, even some people currently in the program, that uh, have like tattoos on their forearms and so they have to wear long sleeves underneath their scrubs all the time because they have to keep their tattoos covered. I've got one uh, a woman student who's got a tattoo on the back of her neck so she can't wear her hair up she has to wear it down all the time to cover that tattoo. Uh, for distant sites uh, this is our again our generic dress code but if you're going to a distant site contact the clinical site once you get approval from me to do your job shadow to talk about what their dress preference or requirements might be. And if they give no preference, then go with what we've got up here. Uh, better to overdress, to be dressed up more than what you need to, than to be underdressed. During the visitation, please remain in each designated area that you're assigned to. If you have questions, do not hesitate to ask. Be careful, however, of asking questions while in the presence of patients. Wait until the patient has left the area. So your job, your role in the job shadow is to, well, get a first-hand view of what radiation therapy is like. But that doesn't mean that you have to stand in the corner and be completely out of everybody's way. We want you to kind of uh, be up there and be participating as much as they show you how uh, to participate. Uh, you don't want to be you know, bossy or kind of bumping into people and stuff. But uh, you're their guest. And, and typically radiation therapists are proud of what they do and want to show you what they can do. And they, if, if anything, the one of the kind of uh, uh, criticisms I get from uh, 
uh, clinical staff is sometimes they say, well, this student just kind of hung out in the corner and never asked questions and never interacted. And they tend to interpret that as you don't care about what's going on. So feel free to talk with them, engage with the patients, talk with the patients a little bit. Um, but uh, don't feel like you're, you're in the way. Uh, but if, you, uh, if a patient asks questions, uh, then always defer those questions to the radiation therapist. And if you have any questions to the radiation therapist, don't ask those questions in front of the patient. Always wait until later on and say, now, why were you doing this? Or how does that work? So uh, I want you to participate, but at the same time, be careful about what you say, at least in front of the patient. And with respect to that, look at this bottom paragraph. There's this law called HIPAA. It's, it's an acronym. It's H-I-P-A-A. -A. And never mind what it stands for. It basically states that patients have a legal right to privacy. So uh, I'm just going to read this. By signing below, I acknowledge that I am not to discuss any potentially identifying information about any of the patients I see in my clinical site visit. I understand that patient privacy is critical and legally of utmost importance. Any documents relating to patient information cannot leave the clinical, clinical site. I also understand that for legal reasons, I am not to discuss or make any statements relating to diagnosis, which is what disease or other medical conditions the patient may have, you can't, you, you know, most of what we treat is, is cancer, but you can't even tell the patient, oh, you've got cancer, because that's making a diagnosis to say that they've got a certain disease or to state anything about that disease. You also cannot talk about something called prognosis, which is the probable outcome of disease, which basically means you can't talk about uh, whether or not they're going to survive their, their treatments or their disease process or not. So you, you can't say things like, oh, I'm sure you'll be fine. I'm sure you'll make it. You can't say something like that because that, that can be construed as a prognostic kind of statement. And you can't talk about these kinds of things with patients, their families, or anyone that is not directly involved in treating the patient. You can talk about this with the radiation therapist, uh, but nobody else, like patients, their families, uh, bystanders, nobody else is allowed to be hearing those kinds of conversations. You can even go home at night and kind of say, man, I saw this one uh, patient that had a a cancer on their leg that was just really big and I never seen anything like that. You can say stuff like that. You just can't say anything that would in any way, shape or form help to identify the patient to anybody else outside of the, the legal, the, the, the medical area. So do kind of keep that in mind. But do consider the, the uh, job shadow to again be part of your uh, process of being interviewed by the clinic because they're going to be looking at you and they're going to be assessing you and determining whether or not they really want to have you around all the time because it's a big commitment for them to have you in their clinic two to three and a half days a week for uh, five semesters of clinical study. So it, they're going to be very picky about who they want into their clinic and who they let into their clinic. So consider this as sort of a job interview. You want to be cordial and friendly to the staff and uh, well you want to just be friendly. How about a keyword of shadow? <laughs> the shadow knows, job shadow. So that's a little bit of insight about that form. So again, you send this form in to me after you do your clinical site visit. You don't have to take this with you. You just fill it out after you do your visit, and you can scan it, send it to me as an email. Again, everything that you send to me is going to be digital as an email attachment. So anything you send to me, no papers, please. No papers. So there's another clinical form, and this one you do make copies with uh, of this form and take them with you to the clinic. Make about three copies of this form and take it to the clinic. Again, this is a sample form. Use the actual PDF if you would, please. And this is the form that you take with you to the clinic where the therapists that you shadow for the day fill this out. You should get at least two therapists to fill this out, which is why I want you to make three copies to take with you, just in case you follow three people around. But get at least two people to fill out this form, and they're directed here to fax it to me after they complete this form. You don't get to really see what they write about you. They just take this form and directly fax this to me. So they fill this stuff out. They circle all of their appraisals of you, and they send this to me. Okay, so that's, uh, that's that. So you take, again, make three copies of this form, print out three copies of this form, and get at least two radiation therapists to fill out this form and send it to me after you've completed all of your job shadow. Don't do it like a, if you have 16 hours of job shadow, don't do one of them for one day and one of them for another day. Have them fill it out at the end of all of your job shadow hours, all of your 16 hours or four hours if it's Amarillo, then have them send this to me. Okay. 
And then here's the uh, technical standards or, or health form, basically. I've alluded to this uh, in the past. Please do read through all of this. It does state here, I, I just recently put this in bold print. This is not intended to be an all-inclusive list of things you have to be able to do but rather a basic outline of the basic physical demands of the educational endeavor. If you have anything that's in this long list, there's a long list of stuff starting like in here, of things you have to be able to be to do. So read through this stuff and make sure that you're okay with all this stuff. But if you see if you're aware of maybe a, a condition that you have that is not on this list that um could maybe impact your ability to perform as a radiation therapist, do let us know. You have to let us know that. Uh, just as an example, I had a student uh, years back who had uh, narcolepsy, which means basically uh, that person uh, would, uh, be on their control, fall asleep at <laughs> just random times. That's kind of a big deal when you want to be a radiation therapist operating uh, uh, turning, putting on radiation into a patient uh, uh, for treatment. That's the, <laughs> that's kind of a big deal. So if you have anything along those lines that might impact your ability to perform as a radiation therapist, do let us know. Otherwise, you would just fill out this form, and this would be one of the things that you send to us as you would sign it there, acknowledging in circle, yes, that you can do all this stuff. Uh, so there you go. Uh, social security number, I don't know why I still have I'm going to just take that out. Because, uh, well, it's still going to be on the form that you download. So just realize I, I don't need your social security number. Just your signature is fine. So at any rate, uh, our, our last keyword here is going to be the word health. Because this is the last thing that we have on this document. Although you still probably have the, the, the financial stuff to review. This is the end of the documentation and the extra forms and stuff. So there we go.